guys, so today I am going to attempt to tutorialize something for you and that something is the perspective rulers in Clip Studio Paint. So let's go ahead and get started. This is just going to kind of be like a little intro here. Um, where I like to pull up the rulers is over here in these uh, this little rectangle subtool area. Well, I have the uh, direct selection tool selected, something like that. Anyway, um, I like to pull up my rulers here. Um, you'll notice under the ruler section that you have linear ruler, curve ruler, figure ruler, ruler pen, special ruler, guide, perspective ruler, and symmetrical ruler. Today we are going to focus on the perspective ruler. This is where I like to uh, set up my rulers. However, if you really want to, you can go over here and select um, under ruler frame, uh, create perspective ruler. And you can choose one, two, or three points perspective. And I'll just go ahead and show you an example of this. Dude, here it is. And it pretty much just, uh, it sets up a generic ruler setting for you. Um, you can use the the selection tool and you can uh, you can drag the different elements around by the uh, the little circles. Um, you can activate and deactivate with the uh, diamond shapes. So if you wanted to do it this way you totally can. You can move the um, the vanishing points, duh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I am totally gonna have to edit this. Um, you can also adjust the horizon line. Woohoo! Anyway, uh, so yeah, there's like a lot of stuff you can do. You can drag the whole jalopy around and all that. But my favorite way to deal with a perspective tool is to do it all freeform by hand, which is what I'm going to show you now after I delete this layer. Okay, because I am completely lazy and I am totally out of creativity, I'm just going to show you how it is to, whoops, plot the perspective of this picture that I pulled up on Pinterest. It is super small, but not to worry. We're just going to transform this beast Woohoo! Yeah, this will be about appropriate. Well, maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. Ooh. There we go. Hit return. Alright, so now we're ready to go. We have uh, a picture that we want to plot the perspective on. So I'm going to go over here and pull up the perspective ruler. Now what happens is when I touch the screen with my cursor, which I'm not going to do right at this moment, it's going to activate a little line for me. So I'm going to focus on one of the points of perspective right now. And I'm going to go ahead and go here. And you can see I just clicked and woo, I have a perspective line. Anyway. Um, so I'm going to line it up with the top of that, the uh, bookcase here. And then I'm going to come down here and choose one of these lower ones. Line it up. And suddenly we have a horizon line and two perspective points and a vanishing point. And this is based off of, um, based off of just the the bookcase. And why am I keep on forgetting bookcase today? It's like an English word I've known for a long time. Anyway, so this is actually a two-point perspective. It's a gentle two-point perspective, as I like to call it, because it's not too crazy. So I'm going to come over here at the table, and we're going to plot this going this way. Oh, well, it wasn't perfect, so let's Ah, okay, I have to do this. Hang on. If you mess up and you don't get it perfectly lined up, you basically will have to plot another perspective point or line, whatever, and um, then you'll have to Command-Z it. Okay, let me clarify that a little bit. 
Alright, so one of the things that I forgot to mention, and I should have been a little more specific about it, so we're going to edit the video and stick this little bit of footage in there, is um, deleting your uh, perspective points and um, changing things up and whatnot when you make a mistake. So, like I said before, you c if you are making a new um, perspective, perspective line, um, and you screw something up, like let's say I do this and whoa, you know, that's not good. Well, you're committed to finishing up that vanishing point. So you have to basically uh, go ahead and, and plot the next one. And then you can go over here to the uh, object selection tool and you can just click that, um, the vanishing point and it'll activate everything and then you can just delete it. And now, of course, these other ones are deactivated. Anyway, so that's pretty much how that goes. And I can go in here and I can select all of my vanishing points and delete everything if I want to. But I don't, so I'm not. So I think that covers deleting, hopefully. Now, back to the tutorial. So this is on the same perspective plane, above the window is on the same perspective plane as the table. Kind of, it's not exactly perfect. Anyway, so um, the window is a little bit off in perspective from the tables, so probably the table's a little cockeyed, but that is okay. Um, one thing I like to do when plotting the perspective points, and here I'm going to uh, scroll out so you can see, I like to keep my horizon line level because once you start having the horizon line not level, it gets pretty nasty confusing. So I'm going to recommend when you first start using the perspective tool to go ahead and keep your, um, your horizon lines um, perfectly horizontal. Don't be like having them all at angles and stuff like that. So now that we've plotted out um, our two point perspective here, we um, I'm going to go ahead and set up another layer and basically, which this is a typical tactic of a lot of manga artists is then you just, uh, well, let me dumb this down a little bit. You just kind of go in there and, and start plotting all your lines. So here we are, and you know, here we are making bookcases. Whee! I know, it's so exciting. You can't contain yourselves. Admit it, you love perspective. You never thought you would, because you hated it in elementary, right? When you first had to learn it? Yep, I totally did. I thought it was tedious, and I disliked it. Anyway, so you can kind of see... <laughs> <laughs> that was a little TMI for you. Anyway, as you can see here, you know, we've got our perspective lines getting going. And here we are with the table. And so on and so forth. Actually, I'm kind of having fun. So, there's one last thing I want to mention on this little mini tutorial, and that is that I like to draw on a separate layer from the perspective ruler. As you can see, I drew on this layer up here. Now, uh, the reason why I like to do that is because when you turn on and off the little eye toggle here, you can make the perspective rulers invisible. Now, here's the thing. When the perspective rulers are invisible, if you're drawing on a separate layer, you can kind of go in here and start drawing, you know, more organic sorts of forms. Like, we have this little lady here. We're going to make her look super dorky. Ho ho ho! Anyway, so yeah, you can do this kind of, kind of stuff. And then you can turn the perspective rulers back on and you can continue to go to town on the uh, the snap to uh, perspective lines. 
Alright, so that was just kind of like a little quick start guide here to um, get you started with the perspective rulers. There's an awful lot more to learn about the perspective rulers, but I think I will keep these videos in short little information packets so you can go back and easily rewatch without wasting hours of your time on it. You know, that kind of thing. At least that's what I appreciate, so that's why I'm doing it this way for you. Also, I just want to point out that I do not advocate tracing um, <laughs> photographs that do not belong to you for um, <laughs> for uh, comic work or illustration. If you have taken the photograph yourself, feel free to trace it. Um, otherwise, you should probably just look at a photograph, multiple photographs, and get an idea of something you want, and then um, create your own little perspective landscape on your own. Don't just trace other people's photographs, because that's rude, because this photographer spent some time putting this together. I don't even care if it was for just some good housekeeping magazine. It's still art. Anyway, I suppose that would be an interesting topic for another day. But uh, let's call it a day here. Um, if you have any questions or you have anything specific, especially related to the perspective rulers in Clip Studio Paint, let me know in the comments and I will try to tackle that in another video. So that's all for now and I will see you next time. Bye bye.